I am excited to have my guest and introduce Cheryl Meyer today. Today, we're going to talk about health, chronic illness, food, toxins. We're going to cover the gamut in a fairly compact uh, talk today because Cheryl has written several books on the topics. She is somebody who has experienced autoimmune disease in her life. And even though it's not gone, she has really managed the pain through what she's eaten or what she's eating and eliminating toxins and really exploring those things that cause inflammation in our body. So I'm really excited to have Cheryl on today. So thank you for taking time and joining me. And I know you're going to expound upon what I just said. So please introduce yourself and let us know what brought you to this point? What what happened that led you to write these books and make these big changes in your life? Um, my name is Cheryl Meyer. I'm known as Cheryl M. Health Muse because I want to inspire you to live a healthier life and have healthier lifestyle habits. Ten years ago, I was a business owner. I had a jewelry business. I was flying all over the world designing jewelry and selling it to big box jewelers like Macy's and JCPenney and Amazon. And I was doing everything to make my business successful, except I was not practicing self-care. So I was getting little warning signals, but they were going through my brain with the speed of light. And I just wasn't paying attention to them. A couple of friends pulled me aside and told me my stress was out of control, didn't stop me. And then one morning I woke up and I literally couldn't get out of bed. Everything in my body hurt. So... After the third day, I went, okay, this is not the flu. I don't know what's wrong. It was in my muscles and my joints. So I went to my doctor, and four different times we ran tests. She was a conventional doctor, and she came back to me and said, guess what? There's nothing wrong with you, but I'm going to put you on steroids. And I went, what? I said, look, something's wrong with me. I hurt. This is not normal. And why would I go on steroids if there's nothing wrong with me? I said, I'm going to research and I'm going to find out what's going on. She said, you'll be back. I said, no, I probably won't. I've been with her for 10 years, but I didn't have a clue what I was looking for. So I dug in. Now I was lucky because my team took over the business and I just started researching and I tripped in what's known as the functional medical community. And at the time they were running 19 different podcasts and summits where Multiple doctors were talking about how they all became functional because they got sick and couldn't help themselves. And that caught my attention. So I listened to every doctor's presentation in all 19 symposiums. And I made notes. Toxic load. What was that? Had no clue. Stress. Stress was one of the big causes of toxic load. I knew I had stress. My cortisol showed up almost to Addison's disease. It was so low. So that was a place I marked that I had to start. I had to learn what to do about my stress. And then I live in California normally. They had GMOs on the ballot. None of us had a clue what it was all about. It was so miscommunicated so that it passed that the way they could do GMOs in California. So I started there. What were GMOs and could that have made a difference in my health? So I started first learning, I took yoga with a Tao group in town, and I learned how to breathe. My favorite is the Dr. Andrew Weil 478 breath. I also sometimes do the um, perfect breath, which is 5.5 seconds in and 5.5 seconds out. You can all find all of those on YouTube. And you can actually find videos and do them with the little videos. Andrew Weil does it on several videos where you can do it with him. He was the first integrative doctor. Um, he actually went to Harvard, never expecting to be just a medical doctor. His mother was an acupuncturist. So his whole dream was always to integrate all the different modalities. So his breathing exercise works so well for me that when I'm in LA traffic, going to my functional doctor that I now go to, who's an hour away from me, I do that breathing exercise and I have the best blood pressure of anyone she sees and the lowest Funny. pulse. So I know Funny. it works. Um, so that's where I started. Then I dug into food. Everything I dug into, I was appalled because I had no idea that we were being poisoned from so many different angles. So not only are conventional crops sprayed with heavy pesticides and herbicides, all of which are sides, and side means poison, but 
GMOs are where the poison is actually grown up in the plant, and what grows in it is something called Bt toxin. That's there's two kinds. That's the first kind, which means when the bug bites the plant, it blows them up, which is all ducky, except that when it gets into your gut, it blows up all your good gut bacteria as well. And when Monsanto introduced Bt toxin, they said, never worried, your body will cleate it back out. Well, it doesn't. Instead, it cleates out all your minerals. Because And because the plant has this in the dirt, we're not even getting as many minerals from the plant in the first place. And then whatever we get, our bodies are rejecting and cleating back out. So that's the first kind of GMO. Sounds ducky, doesn't it? And the, to make it even more complicated, it's replicating in our gut. So it's growing this Bt toxin, and it's interrupting other body functions. The second kind of GMO is made Roundup ready, and Roundup is glyphosate. And we discovered, I think it's been two years now, that they'd known for 20 years that glyphosate caused cancer, and they lost a huge lawsuit. And um, Bayer bought Monsanto just as they lost the lawsuit and has now paid out $28 billion to other people who got this one specific kind of cancer, but it's still being sprayed on our food. So I've become an enormous advocate for eating organic, and I'm lucky because I normally live in California. I have a great farmer's market, and a lot of the country's food is actually grown in California. So I have actually found places that will ship food to people who don't have the advantages I have so that you can eat organic too. And then the other thing I discovered is what they're doing to our animal meat. I do eat animals. I am paleo. I'm actually what's called pagan. I am half paleo and half vegan. I eat small amounts of meat the size of the palm of my hand. But we want meat that eats, that animal has to eat his own diet, what he was put on this earth to eat. So if he's a cow, he has two guts. He needs to eat grass. He does not need to be eating GMO corn. And what your animal eats is also what you eat. So if you're ignoring that you're not eating GMO vegetables, but you're eating a cow that ate them all, you still have that stuff in your body. So lambs only eat grass, so you're safe. We buy something called heritage pork, which is one of the original pork, one of the original pig, pig types. And he is also eating his own original diet that has no corn in it. We eat wild fish. We eat wild shrimp because all of those, if they're not wild and they're farmed, they're literally swimming in beds of poison. So you're getting all that poison when you eat the fish. So it's a big deal. I now teach classes about this because the other part of this whole thing is the standard American diet. Big food has been making a fortune on us. And there's almost nothing real about what is in those boxes or in that frozen uh, box at all or in fast food. It's all chemicals. And what they've done is they have hired industrial scientists that have made it look, taste, feel, even on the tongue, like it's the real thing. But there's nothing real there. We're not getting any um, nourishment from the food at all. And as a result, there was a new study that just came out that said 83% of us are metabolically unfit, which means we're on the verge of chronic disease. Well, I crossed over. There's something called toxic load, which I mentioned. I was getting toxic load from everywhere. I live in LA. My air was toxic. I was cooking on toxic pans that had Teflon on them. I didn't want to give that pan up because nothing stuck on it till I read that where the Teflon um, factory is in Delaware, all the birds were gone because they were all dying from what was coming out of the factory. And then eventually that entire town got cancer. So if you have that's why they say it's so important. I didn't mean to cut you off, but that's a yeah, really no. good point. It's that if people don't want to give up their Teflon pans, they say it's so important that if you see a scratch or a nick, you know, never use metal utensils in your Teflon. But the minute that is opened or scratched, that toxic Teflon can then come out and leach Plus, out of your food. It's and that's not very just dangerous. that it's going little bits into your food. It's letting off stuff that's the going gases. into your lungs. It's off-gassing. Right. So yeah. you don't want that. 
Um, and I have found a pan that I absolutely adore that also doesn't let anything stick. It's called From Our Place, and it's an everything pan. And I now cook in it, wash in it, and have it all ready to go the next time because I love it so much. From Our Place, like O-U-R, From Our mm-hmm. Place? P-L-A-C-E. Okay. And it now I'm... comes in two sizes. Originally, it only came in the larger size, but now it comes in like a 10-inch size. So I have oh, two. Oh, interesting. It's, it's Thank really you for sharing thing. that, Cheryl. I gave it to my whole family for Christmas last year. Um, and Sounds they all good. love it as much as I do. So it's what we store our food in. I was storing in plastic. So let's talk about plastic for a minute. You do not want to be drinking your water or storing your food in plastic because it's letting loose off-gassing and little bits of plastic that are going into our bodies and poisoning us. So I converted to all glass containers with silicon lids, which does not emit poison. For my water, I got a water report from my city. There's all kinds of crappy stuff in water. People throw their pharmaceuticals down the toilet. Um, And it has stuff. I get mountain water because I live right at the foot of the San Gabriel Mountain. But even as, and we have underneath our city, we have wells. So we have about the best water in LA and it's still got crud in it. So you need to filter it. I started off with a Brita. I then went on to getting something under the sink that took all the crud out of it as it came out of the sink. And that's what I cooked with. And then I put it into stainless bottles that I carry with me everywhere. Um, And now we have put it on the full house because I've become like a smoke alarm to any toxin in a 50-mile radius. My body goes off. It it tells me loud and clear. I get inflammation. I guess once you've hit your load, you know, going back to that toxic load, is it something that we can find out like in a test or is this just something that you have to kind of listen to your body about? I actually do have an article on my blog of all the things I missed that should have told me that toxic load was building. I was getting random rashes. I had terrible agita, which is upset um, in my stomach. My skin was not looking good. Um, I was waking up fatigued, more tired than I was when I went to bed. And um, and there's a whole bunch of them that just, they're normal things that I just ignored. I pushed through. I loved what I was doing. And so, okay, I'm a little bit tired. I'm just going to work a little bit harder. And I didn't have the energy that I had normally. I was starting not to go to social events. All of that should have been a key that something was going wrong with my body, but I wasn't paying attention. Even my hair started falling out and was less easy to manage. Um, I had terrible body odor. This I find fascinating. I have no body odor anymore because I have no inflammation. If I get a little bit of inflammation, I can tell a little bit. But I was having a horrible time with underarm deodorants because they would work for like three weeks and then eh, they wouldn't work and I'd have to go looking for another one. I now use a deodorant from a woman who got Um, autoimmune disease as well. So she created it for self-defense and it's called Soap Willa, S-O-A-P-W-I-L-L-A. And it's clay that has essential oils in it. Works like a charm, Mm -hmm. nothing toxic in it at all. I found it in, of all places, Bizarre Magazine by a woman who was having a terrible time with toxins. So I just started looking for any place that I could remove toxicity from my life. There's a giant database in the sky called ewg.org, the Environmental Working Group. People may know them because they put out a list every year of the dirty dozen and the clean 15, the dirtiest vegetables that you only buy organic because they could have as many as 82 toxins on them, or the clean 15, which are the cleanest of what is grown on conventional farms. I've even stopped buying the things on the Clean 15 unless they're organic, um, unless I absolutely can't find them any other way because they too have 15 or 20 neurotoxins on them or hormone disruptors. They're just not as bad as the other ones and my body doesn't want them. And so I've taken a stand that I'm worth it to find the stuff that's not been sprayed. Um, Yeah. 
Environmental then, Working Group is really a great database for, for, for those who are listening who might not be familiar with it. You can go in there and you can type in an ingredient or even a brand name in a variety of categories from cleaning products to food, and it will give you a rating like from A to F. And then really you decide at that point, what is your right. personal standard and what do you want to have in your life and what don't you want to have in your life? So, And in the beginning, um, I was looking all the ingredients up. I have si- since been an environmental person who said, now you start at the bottom, those are the smallest amount, and you go up the list until you hit something toxic and you stop. You know you don't want to keep going because if the little amounts are toxic, you know the big amounts are going to be toxic too. So clean. I've changed everything. My cleaning supplies have all been changed out. My laundry soap, one of the most toxic things in your house is your laundry soap. If a toddler was to eat one of those little pods, you probably can't even make it to the emergency room. They're that toxic. Um, And one of the ones that shocked me was all scents, all perfumes are extremely toxic. That ad where he's smelling his laundry and going into apoplexy, oh, my God, he's poisoning himself every time he's doing that. You don't want scents. If you want things to smell good, you put a little bit of essential oil in your laundry or a little bit of essential oil in a diffuser in your living room. No more air fresheners. Not even right. the one who takes all the fragrances out of the air. It's all poison. It's going through your skin and it's going into your lungs and it's going to make you ill. Yeah. Fragrance is one of those kind of buzzwords for me that when I see it in something, it's not, I want to you know steer away from it. I'm a huge advocate of using dryer balls, uh, like oh, yeah. dryer we balls in the They're dryer. Fabulous. Yeah. I add a few drops of essential oils. I use two of them per load and I add about five drops each because I love my sheets and my towels to smell like lavender yes. and it's a great way to, now it's not going to last 12 weeks like those, you know, beads that they, you know, tell you to put in your laundry, but again, they're not toxic. It's not, you know, you're using essential oils and, and so remember, I'm glad that you brought that up because yeah. fragrance is a big word, you know, that combines a lot of toxins under yeah. one heading and the stuff you spray on yourself to smell pretty isn't any better. It's all toxic. No. So I use a little bit of essential oil. That's it. We Listen, and I knew we would cover a lot of stuff in a short period of time, just like I prefaced at the beginning. I I, I knew this was going to happen. I was so excited to talk to you because you have completely changed your life. And I'm curious, how long has this transition taken from pretty much attending those 19 um, events to where you are today being this huge advocate for making these changes to a healthy I didn't lifestyle. mention one thing that was a giant step forward and that was food sensitivities, but um, took okay. me five years to trade out all my products and some since have been discontinued. So it's an ever ending treasure hunt, but I took a sensitivity test and I had 18 food sensitivities, including things that are not normal. I was, I was sensitive to chicken. Because when we went through the phase where everybody said, eat chicken, don't eat beef, I was eating a lot of chicken. I used to joke I was going to cluck I was eating so much chicken. Well, I can't go near it now. And lots of herbs, normal things that people are sensitive to, like um, nightshades, I have no problem with. I can eat tomatoes, I can eat bell peppers, I can eat eggplant. But give me basil or mustard, and I immediately react and blow up. Um, wow. So there's all, and, and they think it's because you're eating so much of that thing that there's something called leaky gut, which I hadn't mentioned. First you go into toxicity, then you have something called leaky gut. The gut lining that we have is tissue paper thin. I find this fascinating. If I were young, I'd go back to school. But if, if you have stress, If you eat all these toxins, if you're breathing all these toxins in, they all go through your liver, which is your clearinghouse, and then they all end up impacting your gut. So you eat food and your gut can't digest the food because it's interrupted by all this toxicity. So they don't come down to the right size. So they start pushing up against the tissue paper and they eventually break a hole and they go through, which is why it's called leaky gut. And then your body does exactly what it's supposed to do. And it goes, react, something's foreign here. And the body's fascinating. It mimics wherever you're weakest in your body. 
I was weak in my muscles and my joints. Somebody else might be weak in their thyroid and get Hashimoto's or Graves' disease. Somebody else might get Alzheimer's. Somebody else might get IBS. Wherever you're the weakest is where your body attacks because it can't tell the difference between that wrong size foreign food particle and that body system for you. And here's the rub. If you are dealing with any of those things, um, if you don't start to clean up and eat right and clean out the toxins and change out your products, there's something called multiple system atrophy, where you don't get just one autoimmune disease. You might get an autoimmune disease and cancer, which is all related. You might get heart disease with it and cancer, or you might get multiple autoimmune diseases, but they just keep accumulating because the body is so out of balance. It doesn't know how to restore balance in your body unless you start eliminating what's causing the aggravation. So where does one get a sensitivity test? Um, if you have a doctor who will order it, mine were done through a company called Genova Diagnostics. Allopathic doctors, which are conventional doctors, don't believe in it. They only believe in allergies, which is baloney. An allergy is something like peanuts, where you eat it and you immediately react and it could kill you. I am allergic to penicillin, but my sensitivities are something that causes what's called a slow burn. That's why it's inflammation. The sensitivity goes into your body and it builds up until it's a slow burn. And then it starts to add into all of the aggravation and lack of balance in the body. And I've come to the conclusion that health is balance. So it's all important. You need to restore balance so that you can return to health. So, now, you, you teach people this a lot. I understand you have courses, and I think you even have one coming up uh, February of 2023. Is that right? The first one that's going to come up is the course I've been running now maybe eight times, and it's how to ditch the standard American diet and break your addiction to sugar and to all the chemicals in food. Most of the people who have written courses on this only want to worry about the sugar, which is a toxin and interrupts your body something fierce. It lights up your brain like cocaine does and turns off all your feel-good hormones. But all the synthetic chemicals that taste like they're real things, they're doing the same thing. And I've had a weight issue my whole life. I've lost 65 pounds now without dieting. Since I six, first five? discovered it. Six, six, five. Five. six, five, 65 wow. pounds. And I never dieted. I just changed how I eat. So I teach people how to do this. But I made this amazing discovery. Have you ever heard of ghrelin and leptin? They're two leptin, hormones. Leptin, yes, leptin, but not the other one. L-A-P-T-I-N. Oh, no, no. Yeah, I never had heard of them. They're two hormones that control how much we eat and tell us when to stop or tell us that we're hungry so that we eat more. And if we're eating sugar and all these synthetic chemicals, we turn them off. So we don't know when we're full. I remember one year sitting after Thanksgiving dinner and going into the kitchen and picking at the pumpkin pie going, how could I still be hungry? I just ate this enormous meal. Well, I was still hungry because my two hormones were working. Who knew? Yeah. And they all go up yeah. and turn off all your feel-good hormones. They turn off your dopamine. They turn off your serotonin. They turn off your GABA, which um, keeps you away from anxiety. They turn off your, they cause problems with your blood sugar and your insulin. Um, and so, and what you eat actually impacts your brain because of something called the vagus nerve. It goes all over the body, the vagus nerve, but the main nerve goes from your gut to your brain. So all that stuff travels right up and turns all the good stuff off. So there's a whole new field in functional medicine called nutritional psychology that even believes that what we eat is what's causing depression. It's, I, I did. believe that a lot of these things are so connected when you look at how poor our diet is. So I, I do want to ask you a question that's been kind of rolling around in my brain in the last couple of minutes is that all of these things seem really great. And I feel like one of the biggest obstacles, and correct me if I'm wrong, is that when you share this information with people, I would think that one of the biggest comebacks that people say is, well, I can't afford to eat like that. Yeah, because they say several things. One is I can't afford is it. Cheap. 
Right. So my next course that's coming out is everything you can save in your budget and why food quality matters. And I go into how not to waste food, why it's important to go to as close to the farm as you can, how to pick the best one so that it doesn't go rotten, what you can't put next to each other. Like if you put um, onions with potatoes, they potatoes. grow wise. There's right. all kinds of things you can do to make your food last longer because organic is not going to last for 20 years like a McDonald's hamburger is. It doesn't have the chemicals in it to make it do that. But there's all kinds of things you can do to make it last longer. One of the most interesting things I discovered is if you take greens like spinach or any of your good lettuces and you rip them and put them in a plastic bag to put them in the refrigerator, they'll last longer because they think that a deer has eaten it. So it redoes all its phytonutrients again so that you get the full benefit of all the nutrition that's in that plant when you do go and cook it. It doesn't mean you can hold on to it for a week or two weeks, but it does mean that it doesn't go bad right away and it lasts so that you can eat it. Um, and now, we don't want to put it in a plastic like that. We don't want to put it in a plastic bag. bag. You do. How about a silicone? You know, I use those silicone yeah, if you, if uh, you bags. Have the, the silicone bags I found somewhat cumbersome. And I, I have admitted now I can't get away from all plastic. When I grocery okay. shop, I buy things in plastic. So what okay. you do is you do the best you can do, and then you don't get twisty. I would never microwave anything in anything plastic ever because that emits all the gases into the air and into your food. But I do still store things in plastic bags because I don't know what else to do. And I'm hoping some very smart person comes up with something to do instead. <laughs> if I can, I'll rip it up. And I do have large glass bowls with silicone covers. But I don't have enough room in my refrigerator to do I, I buy a lot yeah. of produce every week. So I don't have enough room to do all of that. So I do use plastic still. I just don't use as much. And then I reuse it as much as I can because I don't want it going into the earth and the environment. Yeah. Um, so, you know, pe people are listening and they're saying, okay, I don't feel good and, and I don't know what it is. And, and, and like me for a long time, I just thought that's it. I'm getting older or that's just life. Or, you know, I put on some weight that's normal. All of those kind of things, like you were saying earlier, we just pass on as well. That's it's just happening. Yeah, I believe most well, people well, are walking around not feeling good, and they don't even know it. And they don't even know because and it happens yeah. gradually, so it you does. don't even realize how bad you're feeling because you've almost forgotten how good yep. you felt. You know, a few years ago or many years ago. So, where should people start? What, what's what's like your first line of defense when somebody says, "I don't feel good. What can I do?" I really want people to start with their food. If they okay. would eat clean, which is organic, and without all the, and it's actually truly called crap, carbonated, refined, artificial, and processed foods, like and they that. ditch the Coke and the pop and all of that mm -hmm. stuff for one month, that's all it takes, they will start to feel the difference in their body which is I now have put like 40 people through my class and they can't believe how much better they feel if they stick to it. They all fight me in the beginning. I don't want to do this. Can I have this? Why can't I have that? Can I eat this bread? No. Why can't I have that? And then as they start to feel better and they get into the routine, they're like, wow, this is really great. I'm starting to feel good. And one person went to the farmer's market and bought a cucumber one thing that happens when you start eating real organic food is your taste buds come back. And she called me and said, I never knew a cucumber could taste this good. She said, it's unbelievable. I am never buying a cucumber anywhere but at a, at a farmer's market ever again. This is fantastic. And if you haven't eaten a farmer's market tomato, the difference is night and day. They're like bouncing rubber balls if you're buying them at the grocery store. But if you're buying them from the farmer's market, they're ripening on the vine and it's a whole different taste sensation. So what if, if you don't you'll have do access, it for a month. What if you don't have access to organic food? Um, well, in the second course, I'm going to teach you all the places that you can buy. There's a place called Azure where if you order online, they will ship to you. 
and they'll ship you all the produce that they have. I'm part of a group of health coaches that we are starting to contact farms to try to put together some kind of a network to help people who aren't lucky like me to source food. Now, I just tried the first farm that they found and I bought my Thanksgiving turkey from them and it could have been gold for how much I paid for it. He arrived yesterday. (laughs) So we got to find a way that we can make it more affordable, not less affordable. But in Arizona, which is where my second home is, we have farmer's markets, but we don't have anywhere near as the variety that I get year round in California. So I recognize it's an issue. If you have a Whole Foods or you have a Sprouts or you have a natural grocers or you have a health food store that carries organic vegetables. I have all of those in Sedona um, where I can go get fresh produce. I'm lucky, I'm still lucky. I can't get them fresh from the farm, but I can still get them um, while they're in season and while they're still prime. If you're in some place like Nebraska, you may not be able to do that. So I'm looking for solutions for people so that they can still eat organic. Um, That's great. And, they, and we need it. And there's a hierarchy that I put together. If you can't get organic, that doesn't mean you don't buy vegetables. 70% of what you eat should be vegetables, preferably organic. If you can't get organic, then get what you can get organic and then go down and buy conventional because getting it with the toxins on it is better than not eating it at all. And let me explain quickly why vegetables are so amazing. When I started researching all of this 10 years ago, they were talking about 5,000 phytonutrients that they were discovering in plant food that are there not for us, but for them to protect themselves, but they have all kinds of amazing health benefits. So at first it was 5,000. Then last year I heard it was 10,000. Then I heard it was 50,000. Now they've discovered 100,000. And these are all chemicals. I'm a big advocate of eat all the colors of the rainbow because not only does each color represent a different group of phytonutrients, but when they get together, they party in your body. So if you eat a red Mm, pepper and a green cucumber and then have some spinach, all together, there's a synergy that happens that I can almost feel it going through my joints when I make a great big colorful salad. And I love feeling that way. But you Mm. gotta clean out as much of the crap as you can before your body will even tell you that it's feeling this good. But if you can do it now, most people can get real food in, real fresh organic food in the spring through the early fall. So at least when we come around to that start. Yeah, that's a good place to start, right? Like to the the hierarchy. So, you know, I've recently experienced, you know, I'm pretty clean in my life. Uh, You know, I I run a business. It's all about, you know, using natural products and eliminating, you know, the use of plastic and all of that business stuff, you know, rolls over into my life, or maybe I should say all of my personal life rolled into my business. But in the last couple of years, I have experienced some rashes on my body that I can't explain. And quite honestly, I've chalked them up to their little bumps that happen on the back of my legs pretty much only on the back of my legs. I've chalked it up to having stress and it's almost like my stress kind of builds up and builds up and then it comes out in the form of this rash. It all starts in the gut. So something is annoying your gut. In this discussion, I'm thinking that I might be, I think I'm doing myself a disservice by not having a food sensitivity. Oh, and I didn't continue with that. There's one you can order yourself. It's from a company called Meridian Valley in Seattle, Washington. You email them or you call them. They send you a kit. You puncture your finger. You send it back in the mail to them. And then when they get the results, you get an hour with their doctor explaining how to deal with it. Sensitivities are not forever. An allergy is an allergy is an allergy. If you have an allergy to peanuts, you're not going to outgrow it. But if you have a sensitivity... And it's because you've been eating that thing a lot. You may not be sensitive to it five years from now. Now, I'm sensitive to dairy. I keep trying cheese because I would love to get it back. It's (laughs) not going to happen. So it doesn't always work that way. But I have gotten back mint. I have gotten back sage. There are some Mm -hmm. of the herbs that I had a problem with that I can now use without a problem. So that's the first thing it could be. It could also be stress. I now do breathing exercises twice a day. I do them at 10, 
and I do them at two because the, you don't, everybody has stress, but you don't want it to go over the top into toxic load. So you want to let the top off before you reach that point. And it only takes four minutes to do the breathing exercise. So it's not, you, nobody in your office even needs to know you're doing it if you're working with other people. You do the exercise and you reset your parasympathetic nervous system so that it lets go all that stress and brings you back down to normal. If you're not sleeping, that could cause the rash. Or if there's something your legs are rubbing up against that's causing another sensitivity, that could be it. It's, mm -hmm. you, know, you can go at it from a couple of different angles, but I still sometimes get random rashes. Um, when I go from L.A. to Arizona, it's very dry here, so I always get itchy when I get here. And for rashes, I take a supplement. I don't take any over-the-counter medication anymore. But for rashes, I take something called Quercetin, Q-U-E-R-C-E-T-I-N. It Q -U -E -R. is Q-U-E-R-C-E-T-I-N. It is good for your gut, it's good for your liver, it's good for your kidney, it's good for your brain, it's just darn good for you, but it's also nature's natural antihistamine. And the okay. brand I buy is Natura, and it comes with nettle and um, bromine from pineapple. And I find that one works the best on me. So okay. food quality matters, supplement quality matters. Yeah, I no longer take aspirin or Tylenol or Aleve or any of that stuff. I take um, curcumin, which is the active ingredient in turmeric. Turmeric, and okay. it I, I'm pinching a nerve in my back at the moment, so it's telling me I still have some inflammation in my body. But I'm taking curcumin every time I need to, and it takes about 15 minutes, and the pain goes away. That's cool. Um, so it's really, I have replaced, I have a blog that will tell you what's in my me medicine cabinet. So if I get I like the that. flu, there's something called flu away from Natura that I take that boosts my immune system so that I don't get colds really badly because I don't want flu shots anymore because I react to them. There's mercury in them. So I have my own medicine box of my own holistic remedies um, that I have ready to go if I need it. There's a cough drop by Zand that's delicious. It's orange flavored and it doesn't have sugar in it. It has brown rice sugar in it instead, which is much easier on the body and low glycemic. So I always have Zand orange cough drops around if I need them. Um, you can go look at what I have because I even have a throat spray in there. Anything you might need is there. And just as a comment, anybody out there using Tylenol, I was allergic to aspirin. So my whole life. I use Tylenol. They came out with it in pill four when I was 18. And, oh, boy, I was so excited because I finally had something I could take for a headache. Well, it did quite damage to my liver. And apparently Tylenol is much worse on the liver than they ever imagined. So I wouldn't take another Tylenol today if my life depended on it. But I yeah, still can't I, have, I have the aspirin. I have no gallbladder, so I, I try to be much more aware of those kind of things, you know, in my life because I know that my liver is having to work a little bit harder without having that gallbladder. And I came across a supplement that is good to replace to help your body function without your gallbladder. I will email it to you. Thank I had you, a podcast Cheryl. for two years. I did 120 podcasts. Wow. And I just stopped doing it. Half of them were a deep dive into like your liver, because I don't think we give our liver any respect. I certainly didn't. And I actually have a fatty liver without being a drinker. So I am working on healing my liver. And most people who have a fatty liver don't know they have a fatty liver. So I did four podcasts on the liver and the last one included the gallbladder. But there is a supplement that you can take. The gallbladder doesn't just emulsify fats which is what I thought I did, but I mm -hmm. just discovered it's also important for digestion because your stomach, in order to begin the digestive process, is acidic. And then as it passes into your small intestine, bile is what made it alkaline. So that's why taking the supplement might help you feel better all the way around. It will help you emulsify the fats and help your digestive process as food travels from your stomach into your small intestine. Yeah. And I take a, I take a bile salt, uh, 
can't think of the name of it at the moment, but you know, after they removed my gallbladder, I did have these like instantaneous reactions to some food where, you know, I, I couldn't make it to the bathroom fast enough. And right. they, I learned through my own research that, you know, a lot of that fatty food was just moving through me too quickly and that bile salts could be. And now I, I just take it every day. It's like part of my regimen. And the few times that I have traveled and didn't have it with me, I had, a, you know, that experience. And I'm like, right. okay, I, I see the value in what I'm taking. And part of it is years of listening to my body, which is something I never did when I was Which is what I want everybody to do. One of the yeah. things I advocate for is that every morning when you get up, you look at yourself in the mirror. And the first thing you do is you tell yourself that you love you. And if you love you, you don't only say it, you have to show it. So how do you show your body you love it? With your food, by moving your body, by making sure you're getting enough sleep, by doing your stress exercises and, you know, meditation and all that stuff. So you first declare your love and then you ask your body, what do you need? And then you get quiet and you let your body answer. Now, this is going to sound funny, but your body is incredibly smart. It will tell you what you need. And so then you make a plan and you know, so your body says, hey, you didn't eat very well yesterday. So could you clean it up, please? Because I'm not feeling so hot today. And then you make a plan of how you're going to go through your day and take better care of your body because you love it. You declared it and you want to show it. And just by doing that and getting quiet and feeling your body and listening to it, it allows you to keep all of these lifestyle changes in place because the minute you stop doing them, your body's going to say, hey, I'm not happy. Clean it up. Because once you clean up, my book is called It Feels Good to Feel Good because, wow, it really does feel good to feel good. My second book, my functional doctor asked me to write, which is how do I live this way and sustain it? Because in the beginning, none of my friends were eating this way. And I was even in a relationship with a man who didn't want to change. So he went out the door. I took a class on how to find the right guy because I decided I was terrible at it. She convinced me that I had to have a non-negotiable list. So I went on Our Time, which is the old fogey dating site. I'm 73 now. And I advertised for someone who wanted to go on a get well journey with me. And I met a man who lived 10 minutes away from me, national oh site, who had just lost his wife to cancer. And he, he immediately said, let's talk on the phone. He said, I really need to go on a get well journey because I've been the make, main caretaker for five years and I've gained a lot of weight. He said, but if you'll let me go on this get well journey with you, I think you'll discover I'm one of the nicest men you ever met. Oh. And he is. I married him seven years ago. He's a statistician. He produced my podcast. He edited and did all of that stuff for my two first books. Um, and those books, by the way, have won 24 awards combined. But the second book I started to tell you goes into how do I eat out? How do I go to somebody's house for dinner? Because they're not going right. to cook for me. I don't want them right. to have to cook for me. How do I, what do I look for at farmer's markets? How do I vet farmers with what do they use on their plants so that I'm getting clean food? Um, how do I call restaurants and vet the chef to make sure that he can feed me? And what are the kinds of words I look for so that I know I can eat there? All of those things that took me like three years to figure out so that I could live a normal life. And what's funny is when John and I started doing it together, there were two of us. And all of our friends went, what are you doing? But they've all moved towards us. They're all eating healthier. They're all adopting healthy habits. We didn't tell them they had to do that. But they saw, I've lost 65 pounds. My husband has lost 80. Wow. We look good. We have more energy. We are vibrant and active. And we both feel better than we did in our 50s. So if that isn't reason enough for you to change now, nothing yeah. else. That's the perfect story right there of leading by example is more powerful than anything we can do, really. Cheryl, you have been so fascinating to talk to today and just sharing your experience that you've had in really a fairly short period of time, right? So yeah. Um, uh, normally it takes us several weeks before, you know, we kind of pull the podcast together and, and get it out there. But I, I'm going to move you up on the schedule because I'd really like people to know about your classes that are coming up. So 
uh, tell us where we can find you and in more information of that so that people can get started on this really great path towards feeling better. I have a very robust website and it's okay. under Cheryl M health muse.com. And that's Cheryl with a C M for Meyer health. And then muse, because I want, I, I wanted to be the whisperer, but somebody had it. So I want to inspire you to do all these things because it will make a huge difference in your life. I'm a boomer. Boomers are always looking for the magic pill. The magic pill doesn't exist. One of the guys I interviewed in my podcast had just had two heart attacks and two bypass surgeries at the age of 40. And he had a baby. And he said to me, everybody wants to know what the magic pill is. He said, and I tell them, the magic pill is you. Because if you don't change, your body can't heal. And it has to change. I have 12 pillars of health in one of my blogs. I have all kinds of information on my blogs that would educate you about things that you can do to feel great too. Um, so there's, there's a lot of information there, but there's a store okay. and in the store there are courses and both of my courses are listed there. The weight loss course will start again in fairly close to the beginning of January. It depends on how people sign up for the class. I am rewriting my food quality matters class because the first group of 12 people who took it with me said I was the queen of overwhelm. So instead of taking away, I'm adding to it, but I'm going to split it into five separate courses. And the first part is going to be what is quality food? How do you get organic? How do you know what's in season? Because the closer you buy to the farm, the more of the phytonutrients it has in it. Spinach loses a lot of its goodies in three days. None of us get mm. spinach within three days of it getting yeah. picked. But that doesn't mean you don't eat spinach. So that's the first part. Second part is how can you look at your budget and find places to save money so that you can find money to do this? And third is on food waste because you can use your cucumber peels. You can use all kinds of things to make food. And I don't throw anything away if it's edible. I even save my onion skins and my garlic skins. I put them in a baggie in the freezer. And when I make my next broth, they're the first things that go in because onion skins are loaded with quercetin. So it's really mm. good for us. And so you don't want to be throwing that stuff away. But you do want to make sure you're buying onions and garlic without mold on them because then you defeat it. Um, gotcha. So Good that's advice. going to be it. There's carrots. I eat the skin on the carrots, all those things. I have a series of blogs on food waste and what not to do because you should be eating it. Um, and then I have, it's kind of probably going to be six classes on vegetables, what they do, how to pick the best one, how to store it, what not to put it next to, how to cook it, when to buy it, where to find what's in season in your neighborhood, um, all that stuff. And then the next group is on fruits. And all the things about fruits that you don't know, including how many pesticides are on these things, so that you know that it's a reason for you to be buying them organic. And then the last class, no, there's one more that I just added on essential nutrients. I'm going to go through the vitamins, the minerals, what they do for our bodies, and why they're important, and which things you get them from. And then the last one's on the phytonutrients. There are phytonutrients that can fight cancer. They actually shoot out dots that kill cancer cells. There are phytonutrients that help heart health. We have a pharmacy, F-A-R-M-A-C-Y, right in our food, in our bodies. If we would only learn to utilize it, that doesn't mean that you don't need to do what your doctor suggests and take a pharmaceutical drug, but all it does is mitigate the symptom. It does not cure you. And if you at the same time start eating all of the phytonutrients and all the colors, they will build your health from the inside out so that eventually you can wean off that pharmaceutical and not take it at all. Wow, Cheryl, it's so great that you're documenting all of this information. And really, I feel like you're, you're pretty much documenting everything you've learned in this period of it time. Is. And as I, as I learn new puzzle pieces, right now I'm yeah. working on my, um, my lymph area. My functional doctor doesn't know anything about lymph. I have a heart doctor. She doesn't know anything about lymph. But I keep pulling and getting fat ankles. So I started researching. It's my lymph system. So I just hired a naturopath who bought both my books and I've been on his podcast twice because he has a lymph protocol. 
So as I learn about the lymph, I will teach it to everybody else. I have a huge scar, which you probably have from your gallbladder, from getting my Actually, just little dots. Just little dots. They're interrupting your lymph system because they're interrupting your fascia. So I am now popping a sesame oil capsule every morning and rubbing it into my scar so that it will start to heal from the inside out and stop interrupting my lymph. And if you know anything about lymph and you brush, I started brushing from my ankles up. Uh -uh. The traffic jam is here in your collar blend. So I've learned how to massage starting to open up in the order that the traffic behind it has to go through. So you start pumping here, you do it maybe four or six times, and then you go up to your tonsils, which is part of your lymph system, and you pump there, and then you go behind your ears and you pump there, and now you go under your arm, and you pump under there, and then you go down your arm, then you go down the other arm, and then you go to the middle of your tummy, and you pump there. You don't go to the bottom until you get there by going down through the groin, in front and behind the knees, down to the ankles. And believe it or not, my ankles are normal size, and I've only been doing this for 10 days. What? They were like this, and they were bright red. They got so fat that I got blisters on my left leg where the lymph came through from the muscle under the skin. I I didn't want to lose my feet, so I knew I was going to have to do something. So I called Dan and said, what do I do? Because I've tried everybody else and he has a protocol. So that's why we have to be our own best healthcare advocate, because there is just too much information out there for one doctor or person or advisor, anything to know all of this. And part of why I do this podcast is to, is to gather all of this knowledge that we all contain a little bit of this really good information and it's, you know, pooling it together so that we could share it with each other. And And you've been a wonderful guest. Doctors go to medical school, which is run by pharmaceutical companies. I didn't know that. (laughs) And when they become doctors, their number one source of information is their pharmaceutical rep. So they listen for five minutes. That's the average appointment. And then the pill comes down the chute and you're on your way. You got to own it yourself. It doesn't it's mean so you don't true. go there, but you you have to go home. You have to research. What was the drug I just gave you? What's it going to yeah. do to you? I have diabetes. I was taking metformin. It was creating all the magnesium out of my body. No wonder I could never keep my magnesium at the level that was at. But I'm right. almost to semi-diabetic and on my way out. And John, my husband, is no longer diabetic at all. That's fantastic. So you can, and and the only reason we think I still have the insulin issue is because I got molded in my jewelry office before I shut it down. It was growing in the wall of my office, and I've detoxed four times and it won't leave. So while I'm doing lymph with Dr. Dan, he thinks the mold has gone into my lymph, and that's why it's causing me so much trouble. So I'm doing a whole new mold from a whole new direction, and I'm trying to keep my pathways all open while I'm doing it. Well, hopefully you rub that mold right on out of you, Cheryl, because it's time for it to go. (laughs) I'm ready for it to leave. Oh, well, Cheryl, thank you very much, really, for taking the time today and sharing so much detail about what you're doing. And I can already tell that I'm going to want to have you on again as a guest. And if you'll, you know, make that time for me sometime next year, and we can really talk about these new things that you're bringing in, even talk about the lymph and all of these things that you're adding. So what I want to do instead of the podcast, I've done a questionnaire so people can figure out where they're having issues. Where Mm -hmm. is their toxic load? Married to a statistician, I'm going to use them. And then I want to do three to five minute videos. Because I'm a layman, so I put it in layman terms. I want to put them in a membership area where is if you're having a problem and you're diabetic, you can go get puzzle pieces from me in a membership area and listen to a bunch of little tapes. Instead of listening to an hour to an hour and a half podcast right? in a deep dive, you want to go and grab information. We don't yeah, have patience about- anymore. We talked about a lot of things in here. So if somebody's having one issue, it would be hard for them to kind of get through there, but, you know, get through all of this information. I think, I think you're definitely on the right track with that. And uh, yeah, I look forward to having you on again. I mean, this is going to be, actually, I'm going to probably look into your course because 
I am having some issues and I feel like I do a lot of things right. But just as you doing a lot of things right, you're still having some swelling in your ankle. You're oh, yeah. still having it's, these issues. So it's an ongoing, I guess, for our whole life. Health is a journey. From beginning to end, it is It is a not a destination. Yeah. Health is a right. journey. But if you're tuned into your body and you're listening to it, your body will lead you to go where you need to go next. And I swear to God, the universe is helping me do it, too. When I went, I went back to school at 67 to become a health coach because even though I'd done massive research, I was a jeweler and my BA is in English. So, <laughs> but when I graduated, they asked if I wanted to write a book and I had everything in file folders on my computer. So that's how I wrote my first book. It's 500 pages and I wrote it in two and a half months. Wow. That's I think incredible. I channeled it, honest to God. Yeah, it, so, you're right. It, it, when the right time comes the information is there. We need we this it. information. Yeah. Yeah. And everyone should follow me if they're on Facebook on just Cheryl Meyer. I'm Cheryl Meyer three. I'm posting a rainbow recipe every day. I'm posting about loving yourself and about gratitude. And then I give a couple health tips every day that just okay. might be the puzzle pieces that you need. So Fantastic. I post too much, but people follow <laughs> me for different reasons. And every day I post in all those categories. Oh my gosh, you must be glued to Facebook and your computer every day. Are you pre-scheduling this stuff or how are you doing that? No, everybody keeps telling me I have to. But if I find some little tidbit that's new, I follow several functional nutritionists and functional doctors. Mm. So I'm gathering information all the time. I don't want to have to go through and figure out how to unschedule it. I just do it. I get up early and I get all my stuff done by about 11 o'clock in the morning. And then I work on my classes. Well, so. that's what happens when you're 73, but feel like you're 43, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Cheryl, thank you so much again for taking the time today. I really do appreciate it. And for those listening here today, I know you're going to plug into Cheryl and, you know, join her on Facebook at Cheryl Meyer three um, or on her uh, website, which is Cheryl, C-H-E-R-Y-L M health muse.com. Is that right? Perfect. Perfect. Yay. And All right. Very good. around in there because there's a ton of information. I even share some of the cooking products that I like to use in the kitchen. And there's just all kinds of stuff there. I that love would that. Be Thank you. Thank you for really putting out there this important information because our health is the foundation to really us just enjoying our life to the fullest. So thank you so much, Cheryl. Have thank a beautiful day. Me. I've had a great time. Thank you so awesome. much. Awesome. I look forward to having you again. Have a beautiful day. And for those who are listening, if you know somebody amazing like Cheryl and you feel like they would be a great guest on my show, please connect up. Please connect me with them. I would love to get a chance to speak with them. So until we all meet again, please be kind to each other and love one another. Peace out.